Welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Today we'll talk about requirements management. Requirements management is a pretty large number of tasks, but we're going to break down just the few most important ones today. The first one of that is rationale management and traceability. So we remember from writing down quality requirements that we always want to denote the rationale of why a requirement is specified in the way it is. A lot of people have requirements management in their head predominantly as change management, but it's actually more than that. Requirements management starts as soon as we start with requirements engineering. So that means we want to make sure that we have captured the rationale from our first elicitation meeting all the way through history. We'll talk about that history to come in a little bit, roughly about down here. For now, we'll just talk about the start. So our first iteration of requirements management, that's uh, requirements engineering. That's what we want to make sure that we trace the rationale that for every single requirement that we write down, independent of whether it's on the level of a goal, whether it's a functional requirement, whether it's a quality requirement, or a constraint. We want to know what was the source, where did it come from, and why is it in the way it is. And we want to be able to trace back to that source. So we also don't want to write down client. We want to write down their specific name and the date and time when it was communicated in whichever way. So that's the first subcategory of tasks that we need to deal with. The second one is requirements documentation. And that includes attribution. So documentation is the act of, I'm going to write them down in the form that is most conducive to me being able to work with it later on for functional requirements that may be use cases, for quality requirements that may be a specification of the metrics and measures of how I'm going to follow up on that during testing. Attribution means all the other context information that I can choose to add to a requirement the stakeholder where it came from, the priority it has, the time by which it needs to be completed, other use cases this one references, quality requirements that are uh, a part of what I'm talking about in this specific requirement, that sort of things. That's what we call attribution. So documentation and attribution, that's the second set of subtasks. And now the third part, that is communication and evolution. So in this third part, we talk about how a requirement evolves over time. We have interdependencies with tasks like deployment management, like versioning, like archiving. We need to keep trace of which version of the requirement in this iteration relates to which, which version of the design of that particular system and in which version of the code is that being realized and implemented? Why? Why? So when you think about your current phone, your mobile phone, it has a specific operating system on there. If you have a phone that's as old as mine, then you're going to be worrying when that operating system is not going to be maintained anymore. So while the operating systems on that type of phone evolve over time and are probably many numbers ahead of what I have on my phone right now, my hardware is so old that I cannot upgrade the software anymore. And therefore, I'm relying on them to maintain that version of the operating system for as long as they decide to. And that means for them, it still needs to be traceable 
what happened with those old requirements here, how did they change according to the current context of the system, and how does that play out in design and then in implementation. So that's why we want to keep track of that over time. And then we have a couple of legal concerns. And those are things like claim management and contracting. So as a requirements manager, I'm also responsible when I have claims coming in of, oh, but this should be in here. And for some reason, it's not implemented. Or for some reason, it's implemented different from what the claimant thought it should be and contracting in terms of what is our baseline for the requirements for which our client signed the contract. So we can make sure that they don't try to introduce some late scope creep where they get more for their money than we initially promised them. And so we're not going to shortchange ourselves. So those are your most important tasks in requirements management. For the evolution, we have one specific process that we use to break it down, and that's change management. So that is a term that you will often come across, and that we will detail in another video. Thank you.